hi it's me Anya welcome back to my channel today's video is no supplies heal another Lisa Leeds video and the first book on this list is called the dark tide this is a YA fantasy book and I to be quite honest I didn't really like this book I did enjoy the fast-paced plot and the world building that was solid but the biggest downfall about this book is that it was dual perspective and that each perspective didn't have 50-50 of the story as most dual perspectives books do and i like didn't understand why the author made that choice because if you want me to root for this couple and root for these characters then you should develop them both equally and not give like one character 70 percent of the book and the other character 30 percent one could even argue that one character had 80 percent and the other character had 20 percent I do not understand the point of that and so because of that I could not find myself to ship these two characters together because I did not care for them individually and even the character who had 70% like I found her to be somewhat boring and just like I just didn't care I didn't care for these characters I didn't care for their romance and I will key regret reading this book and that is why I only rated it three stars and I couldn't even give it like a 0.5 or anything. So yeah, there's that. I started off this week's video obviously very strong. The next book that I read is called 10 Blind Dates written by Ashley Elston. This is a YA romantic contemporary book and it's fairly fluffy. It follows Sophia whose boyfriend breaks up with her right after, no, right before they were planning to spend the Christmas holidays together. So Sophia's extended family decide to have a little fun and they settle up on these 10 blind dates. Like I said, this book was fluffy and it was cute. However, I found the end game romance to be very rushed because it happened very quickly. Like they became canon in the last 10%. And because of all the blind dates that she was going on, the 10th blind date was happening at like the 80%, 90% mark on this book so like the end game romantic couple only had like 20 percent or maybe even 15 percent to really get together and i personally thought that like they should have had more development and maybe maybe some of the the previous 10th dates should have been a little bit more i don't know ridiculous or something so that there should be more hints that sophia was going to end up with that guy you know i don't know maybe there just should have been more development or something because i didn't really like that they only got together in the last like 15 percent because i kind of felt like like ashley was like reaching the end of her story and she was like oh oops i have to tie this all together right now quickly you know it kind of like it kind of felt like when the flash season six finale was tied up the way that it was just because of Corona, you know? Like it had the same energy as that. So anyway, overall I did enjoy Sophia's character arc and I did like the representation of her extended family because family is really underrepresented in YA. But yeah, there was that. The next book I read is called Raising Lumi, written by Joan Bowell. Joan Bowell is an author that I'm very, very familiar with and I've read all of her books so far. This book is middle grade contemporary and it follows Olive Hudson who is newly orphaned and she moves in with her new half sister that she has no familiarity with before and she pokes up when she gets a chance to raise a guide dog who's named Lumi. This book was so 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 good. This book reminded me of why Joan Bowell was one of my favorite authors when I was younger because her books are so good and so underrated like all of is such a wonderful character and such a lovely like character arc and the plot takes off so like fast and there's never any point in the book where i find myself like slogging through or anything like this book was so so good it's basically lila and hadley but like a step up you know i ended up writing this book four stars which is so so good because this book totally deserves it and like I said, Joan Bowell is very underrated. So if you're interested in contemporary books, please go check her out. 
The next book I read is called When the Stalls Lead to You, written by Ronnie Davis. This follows Devin, who, after a magical summer, with Ashton at the end of it, Ashton breaks her heart, and Devin is devastated. But she is set on her senior year, pursuing her dreams of becoming an astro astrophysicist, hence the star reference in the title, if you get it. Anyway, but then Ashton shows up, and Devin is afraid of dating him again because obviously he broke her heart, so she's not sure whether or not she can trust him. I think that this book is not worth its hype at all because, like, I preferred Devin and Ashton's romantic relationship over the summer than what it developed to be over the course of this book. You know, I felt that they were cuter. I like the I prefer the dynamic then than now. So because of that, I wasn't like sold on it. I found I thought that, but I will say I thought that the ending was going to turn a different direction. So I did like the story's open ending. But overall, I wasn't sold on the romance. I wasn't really sold on really anything. There's a trigger warning for depression, which I should have mentioned at the beginning of this review. But overall, would not recommend, it's not worth its hype, and it ended up rating at three stars. The next book I read is called I'll Be the One, written by Lila Lee. This is a YA contemporary book, and it follows Skye, who's determined to become the world's first plus-size K-pop star. I really, really loved this book, and I ended up rating it five stars, because Skye is such a wonderful, resilient character. I loved her character arc. I love that the fat phobia that she went through was not sugar-coated. I just really, really like this story. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with Skye. Like, the romance in this book was also, like, cute and fluffy, and it never became cheesy or anything or, like, overly too convenient. I, like, was sold on the romance, on the characters, on everything about this book. It's so, 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 so good. I had the lowest expectations for this book. But I love a book that talks about body positivity, that talks about breaking the stereotypes. I just love this book so, so much. This is a must read, not only for the plus size audience, but also for every single person out there who can see themselves in Sky's resilience. And this book is just so, so, so good. It's so good. I love it so, so much. And it's now one of my favorite contemporary books. And I also really liked that Skye's bisexuality was represented because I love that. This book is so good and clearly I can't stop talking about it. The next book is called The Lonely Halt of Maybelle Lane. This is a middle grade contemporary book and it was so, so good. I ended up reading this book full stalls. It follows Maybelle who enters a singing contest because she knows that her dad will be one of the judges and she's never met him before and she's always wanted to learn more about him. This book was so, so good. I loved the cast of characters. They're all so resilient and wonderful and so, so lovely. And Maybelle is such like a relatable, realistic character. I love her character arc. I love her strength. Her anxiety was represented pretty realistically. And I just really, really liked it. And this is one of those stories that's absolutely worth all of its hype because it is so, 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 so good. I love like Maybelle's journey, not only her literal journey, but her figurative journey as well. But not only that, but also the journey of all the other characters that she met on her way. This book was so, so good. And yeah, it's just so, so good. And it totally deserves the four stars that I gave it. The last book on this list is unfortunately a big disappointment. And it is The Ultra at Dawn, written by Swati Teodali. This is a YA fantasy book, and it's the sequel to The Tiger at Midnight. I really enjoyed The Tiger at Midnight, and I gave it four stars. And The Ultra at Dawn was one of my most highly anticipated books for 2020. But this book was such a disappointment because when I started it, I had no recollection of what happened in The Tiger at Midnight, much less why I rated it four stars. This book did have the typical fantasy fast-paced plot, so that was nice. And honestly, like, I don't really regret DNFing it because if I had DNFed it, then I don't know. This book was, the story was good, 
it just wasn't great and I never really found myself immersed in it the same way that I was with the tiger at midnight like nothing about this book was truly captivating the characters just were kind of there the plot was kind of there the plot twist never like took me by surprise because I realized like two thirds into it that I just didn't care anymore I just didn't care which is obviously not the best feeling that you want when you're reading a sequel so overall this book was the biggest disappointment that I've had all year book wise anyway so so in conclusion the highest rating book that I read in this list is I'll be the one that book is so 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 good so good the lowest rating books that I read this list were The Dark Tide and The Ultra at Dawn. I really want to have no recollection of these books later on this year because these stories were truly forgettable to me. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if any of these books seemed interesting to you. If you want to read any of them, if you have read any of them, let me know what you think. And yeah, subscribe if you're new and thanks for watching. Bye!